When you think of scripting languages, you probably don't think of object-oriented programming like Java. Ruby, however, is exactly that. It is a object-oriented scripting language. And even though Ruby is object-oriented, you actually wouldn't know it by just coding it, which is really nice based on all the shit people give Java. Ruby is actually the first programming language I ever wrote code in. Granted, all I knew how to do was print and get standard input, but it was definitely a start. And look at me now, 10 years later, I have a YouTube channel and I program all sorts of stuff, not just Ruby. That being said, I still like to write a program every once in a while in Ruby, just like keep my skills sharp. And it's a pretty nice language, actually. It was designed by this Japanese guy named uh, Yukihiro Matsumoto. Yeah, obviously I don't speak Japanese. And for a time, it was sort of regarded as a peer to Python in that they were both scripting languages that came out around the same time. They were both being used for web programming, you know, like writing servers and backend web services. And Python actually ended up overtaking Ruby. So the two big frameworks that were competing was Ruby's Rails, which actually is what Twitter is built on, and then Python's Django. I don't know what's built on Django, but I'm sure a lot of stuff is built on Python web servers like Flask and other frameworks that Python just has. So Ruby's kind of fallen out of the forefront, but it's still used today. And then I guess the whole backend scripting war kind of stopped once Node.js came out. But that's okay because with WebAssembly now, apparently you can write front end code in Ruby and Python. I don't know why you would, but it sounds like a pretty good video idea for one day. But anyway, back to Ruby. Like most languages, Ruby has its own dedicated package manager. And with Ruby, it's called Gem. You know, because Rubies are like little gems and they just like look pretty or whatever. So if you just head over to rubygems.org, you can actually view all the different packages people write for Ruby. It's basically like NPM for Node.js. Ruby is a bit unique in that Matsuhiro wanted to make a language that made programmers happy to write code in. And I can really respect that. That's actually really nice. And it's crazy that he was able to pull that off with an object-oriented programming language. So in Ruby, literally everything is an object. Even like primitive numbers will have a class type essentially, and you can call functions on them. Don't quote me on how the interpreter actually stores them. It might just store like primitive values and then just assign functions to them. But in Ruby, everything is treated as an object, except for functions. Functions are, functions are weird. In Ruby, if you want to sort of pass a function into another function, they're not first level entities, right? So there's no functional programming but you can pass in what is essentially a function called a proc. So you basically just pass in a little block of code into some functions, like maybe mapping a list to create like a hash and stuff like that, you would pass in a proc. Or even with the like, essentially a for each function, if you want to go through a hash map, you would pass in a proc that takes in the key and the value and it just goes through from there. So now that I've rambled on a bit too much about Ruby, I'm going to just go ahead and show you guys some code, how to write a simple web server in Ruby without any sort of big frameworks like Rails, because I might just do that in another video. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to go ahead and create my main Ruby file, and we're going to require the sockets gem. Now the sockets gem is actually not on rubygems.org, it's actually internal to the Ruby language. So I don't have to go ahead and use any gems to install it. But for the sake of a tutorial-ish type thing, I'm going to go ahead and act as if I did have to install it. So what you would want to do is use bundle. Bundle is itself a Ruby gem, so you would download it by saying like gem install bundle. Or I think you actually use gem install bundler. It says so on its Ruby gems page. So you just have to run that and then from there you can call like bundle add and then we give it sockets. But because sockets is a internal sort of gem to the Ruby language itself, we don't have to put it into our gem file for us to be able to use it. Speaking of which, to create a gem file, you use bundle init. I'll actually run this just to show you guys what it looks like real quick. So just bundle init. And here we have a simple gem file. 
So what you would do is when you run bundle add, it would pop up with like some extra code over here. It's basically just the URL of the repository of these different gems. And then bundle and gem take care of all the rest. So we're going to require sockets. We're going to say socket equals TCP sockets dot new. We're going to bind it to localhost and we're going to bind it to 2019 because that's the time it is right now. That's the year. So we are going to accept any incoming traffic to our web server and we're going to put hello there. If I could spell it right, there we go. And then we're going to close them. And then we're going to put socket.close, but we're never actually going to call it because I'm just going to control C the program before it even gets to line eight anyway. So let's go ahead and run this. Do Ruby on server.rb. Of course. Okay, I found a few things wrong with my code. Turns out I have to call it a TCP server, not a socket. Duh, and then you require just socket, not sockets. And I should only have to put localhost here, but you know what? Let's put it back just to get rid of confusion. Okay, let's run it. There we go. So we should be online. Now in a new terminal window, I'm going to talk to localhost 2019. And it says, hello there. That's exactly how we make a simple server in Ruby. So I'm going to go back here, control C, like I said I would. And I also want to show you guys a little bit of class stuff in Ruby. Right. So we've established our basic server works. Now, all I want to do is add a little bit more to it. So let's go ahead and show you guys some class based stuff. So we're going to create a dragon and I'm going to give it a attribute reader to message. I'll explain this in just a minute. I'm going to give it a constructor. So in Ruby, the constructors are all called initialize. And this is going to say its message is going to say I'm a dragon. Nothing too complicated. So we got dragon. I'm going to give it an ogre and maybe a goblin or something. I don't know. We're going to give it these three different monsters, right? And what we're going to go through and do is say, I'm going to put them in an array. I'm going to put them in here. And then we're going to go ahead and say message equals monsters. And we're going to give a random integer dot message. And then we're going to put some message. And so for this, we can say rands and times three times monsters.length and then dot floor. So we're going to go ahead and run it again. Oh, whoops. There we go. Here you got my goblin, 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 ogre, ogre, goblin, dragon. Okay, so you get a random monster every single time you request the server. And that is how you write a simple web server in Ruby. Thank you to all of you who watched this video to the very end. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, or click the little notification bell to get notified whenever I update a new video. If you wanna see more videos on my channel, I will have them all around here. Apart from that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.